Okay. Next up, we are delighted to announce we have John Appleby from Newcastle University. Dr. John, A jo Dr. John Appleby, who is also the chair of the North Tyneside Liberal De Democrats. Thank you. And thank you to everybody for coming. It's a great turnout. You come to these things and you think, is it going to be 34 people and a, and a wet dog? And it's great to see hundreds of people taking this seriously. And I like to think that some of the people here are still wobbling and making up their minds. I hope we're not all totally converted already so that we get some value out of that. Anyway, I'm here to talk about the EU and Brexit and universities in particular. But I want to say, first of all, how is it that Britain is known in the world? We're known for our honesty and our sense of justice. We're known for our friends in the Commonwealth. We're known for being a trading nation. We're known for the BBC World Service, the most trusted news service in the world. We're known because we speak English. But we're also known for our universities. I'd like to think that's the jewel in the crown of Britain, but that's maybe me being partial. What's so great about British universities? We're second in the world as a destination for overseas students. We're second in the world. You have to keep the pace up when the students go to sleep, so thank you for that. Um, we're second in the world as a top research nation. We've got four of the world's top ten universities. That's a fantastic thing for a country of our size. We are the top in the world. This is an incredibly important and useful statistic. We're top in the world for educating world leaders. Out of 377 world leaders that were counted for this purpose, 58 were educated in Britain. That's more than in the United States. That's a huge influence on the world. The universities generate 95 billion pounds for our economy and nearly a million jobs. International students generate 26 billion pounds and quarter of a million jobs. That's great, but it's not just Brexit. For years, the government has sounded unfriendly to students. It's doubted students. It's been suspicious of students. Yes, there were some genuine concerns. Thank you for that. Shall I start again? Perhaps I won't. All right, thank you for that. I'm taller than average, so that's my problem. Um, they've been suspicious. There were some genuine doubts, but they've taken a sledgehammer to crack a nut. Our former Home Secretary, who you might remember, now our Prime Minister, has played on this game on the basis of false statistics. It, it's easy to say, well, maybe we can get more students from outside the EU, but students from India dropped 44% between 2011-12 and 2015-16. And that was nothing to do with Brexit. That's a government whose attitude is foreigners are not welcome. Now, Mike said a few minutes ago about our science. Um, we're the second highest uh, gainer from the European research budget after Germany. 16% of UK academic staff are from the EU. 14% of our PhD students from the EU. At Newcastle University, 600 staff are from the EU. That's a lot of people just in one university from the European Union. Newcastle University is estimated to bring a billion pounds into the economy, of which international students are bringing over a hundred million. Now, of course, they're not all from the EU, but a lot of them are, and this is there's two sides to this. It's the whole issue of Brexit is to do with cutting ourselves off, and it's a complete myth that we will strengthen our other relationships because of coming out of the EU, and that's a myth we need to nail. A few years ago, I heard Douglas Alexander give a very interesting talk, and this was maybe uh, 10 years ago, and it was actually on the subject of Scottish independence, and he made a very, very good point, which I thought was worth repeating. He said, if we and Scotland, if England and Scotland can't get on when we have so much in common and so much history, what right have we got to tell people around the world to settle their differences and get on? We say to Iraq, settle your differences, Sunni, Shia, Kurdish. We say to Israel and Palestine, we say to loads of people, settle your differences, you can get on, and yet we can't. That's ridiculous. The same is true about the EU. <laughs> so 
So for a whole host of reasons, we need to fight this and do our best to stay in the European Union. On the grounds of the economy, where the North East will lose more than any other area, maybe 11% of turnover. On the basis of international peace and justice. On the fact that universities are bringing intrinsic value to our own students and staff and to our visiting students and staff. And for the reason that universities are bringing what you might call soft power to the world. All those international leaders, all those international students are going to help influence China, influence Russia, influence other countries and help bring some of our sense of values to those places. For all those reasons, we need an exit from Brexit.